So, guys and girls, thanks for joining us. Uh, so, obviously, I said before, this is Michelle who's joined. A few people have sent in questions already. Um, I am going to... Um... Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. this was, this was um, an interesting one to, uh, to start off with. Um, questions about... So, we've had a number come in already. So, if some people are able to join us live, and then some of them asked previously. I've got a couple from... Um, They've been sent in from the WhatsApp group. There's been some from YouTube. Um, and I guess we'll just dive in and start answering some of these, um, answering some of these bad boys. Um, so first up, breakfast uh, and post-workout meal for someone who doesn't eat dairy products and protein shakes. Yes, good question. So that is obviously a little bit limiting, but there's a ton of different plant protein options. Um, we talk about in the course how plant protein is not always a complete source of protein. So it's really being mindful of making sure you're getting a variety of different things. So some really good options. Um, if you do eggs, I know sometimes with dairy, they assume that means eggs too. But if you do eggs, eggs are a great option. Um, if you don't do eggs, you can do things like um, any type of soy product. So like soy milk in a type of shake. So if you're doing like some fruit with some soy milk, um, any type of nuts and beans are really good. A good like breakfast hash, kind of similar to the one you always make using tofu instead is always a good, great option there. So some tofu or some veg um, are all really good options as well. Yeah. Um, so mentioning, uh, you did mention that my breakfast hash, breakfast hash um, is one of, uh, I do eat meat, but um, try to eat like, high quality stuff, grass fed um, where possible and organic. Um, and yeah, but the, the breakfast hash that I've put together um, is one of the recipes that's in the, the new nutrition course. One, you know, one of the things I'm a mass, I'm a massive fan of um, oats and you, um, someone, there was another question coming on the WhatsApp group was about um, just linked to this. It was about um, breakfast ideas. And it just made me think it specifically of my love of oats, but also the, the overnight oats options that, that you've put together to potentially talk through them as an option. And they also asked about um, post-workout meals. And there's a number of um, shakes that you've, that you've put together for us. So it'd be great to just, just cover them, I think, quickly would be great. Yeah, so the different shakes we have on there, um, we have our green smoothie, which I love a lot. It brings in like avocados and lots of spinach and greens like that. So it, it makes for a really good vegan or vegetarian option. And again, like, in that video, I talk about the different types of liquid you can use. So in that case, that's definitely when I would be using the soy milk. So it's a little bit higher in protein as compared to like your almond milks or cashew milks or coconut milk. So bumping up the protein in that way. Um, and then we have a beet powder one, which is really fun because it's all bright and colorful. And we talk about how beets are really good at opening up blood vessels. So it helps deliver nutrients and oxygen to all those tissues after your workout. So it's really helpful in that way. But, um, so just like beet, as in beetroot, you know, a lot of people, uh, that's what we're talking about, yeah, beetroot. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So it's you can either use like a beetroot powder. There's powders these days. Or if you want to go all out and get some whole beets, obviously just like cooked first so they're nice and soft. Um, we don't want to put raw beets in the blender. But um, those work as well. But good options. And then the last one we go over in that is the banana peanut butter, which is kind of just a classic. But Yeah, that is like a – it's naughty. Um the uh, mm -hmm. I have to curb my like sort of banana peanut butter. You got to watch the peanut butter. Right? Yeah, I managed, to, <laughs> I managed to wean myself off. Like anything in too much success is not great, right? So I managed to get myself away from it, and then um, you encouraged me to get back on it. And it's my own discipline to just be like <laughs> have it in a sensible amount, Jackie. You don't have to go overboard. Um, one of the ones for me was like I I quite like the green smoothies for like getting in. Um, vegetables that I either maybe don't like, don't necessarily enjoy eating that much, but know that they're good for me. But the, so I put in a lot of um, spinach, broccoli, beetroot, carrots, things in into smoothies and make something that like, it might not be the most deliciously tasting thing, but I'm, I can enjoy it enough. And may, a lot of the enjoyment is knowing that I'm getting a lot of good nutrients in there. Um, yeah, one that's thing what that, I love about shakes and smoothies. Like you can put so much into one glass and like you said it, i mean you can make it enjoyable but for some reason it's not the most enjoyable thing like you're getting a lot a big bang for your buck in one little jar yeah exactly and i think that the what what was a little bit of a ooh for me was on one of the rest of the scene for you was when 
uh, the avocado in the smoothie adds a texture that I just not, but I'm quite precious with my avocados. I like avocado that much that I sort of, I, I then become in a dilemma. It's like, I want to eat it with like some egg or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, Did you try it though? I like the texture. It makes yeah, it really nice, like creamy. It, the texture it gives is like, it's, it's definitely worth a try if someone hasn't yet. Um, I, yeah. One, one thing I wanted to touch base on before we jump into some of those other ones is yeah. um, is the because uh, you mentioned it there we talk, we're talking about getting a lot of like nutrient and nutrient dense foods in just your um, approach that resonated with us and hence why we've worked together that that idea of like health first like why we, why are we so focused on health knowing that when we've we've got a, a healthy body it's going to function better, recover better, perform better, so that we do get the most out of our training, but rather than the other way around when we might just focus on performance, and that's going to lead us potentially down a different avenue when we're making choices of like, am I going to have that pre-workout or am I going to make something more natural? You know, just, just touch yeah. on that first, because then follow-up questions around calories will make a little bit more sense that okay. someone's... Yeah, so like you mentioned, in terms of like long-term health and sustainability, it's focusing more on those nutrient-dense foods because in the long run, if your body is functioning well and you're putting the right stuff in, it's going to continue to function well. However, if we're only focusing on performance, which, yes, elite athletes might be doing, but if you look at some of the stuff that they're putting in their body, like you're talking about pre-workouts, really sugary foods, especially at halftime, that's really because they're – they're there, their job is to perform, but in the long yeah. run, those aren't nutrient dense foods if we're eating gummy bears at half time. We can <laughs> definitely fuel ourselves with a lot better options, whether that be dried fruit, because those are full of vitamins and minerals. And in the long run, that's gonna help build up our body to be strong and healthy versus just in that moment having a quick dose of energy. Yeah, yeah. So, which sort of brings on the round, um, you know, a lot of questions around like, calories and the importance of them and i guess we're probably going to we've got like a uh let's just say like a what i feel is like a bit more of a like a more rounded approach and a bit more um a bit more detailed approach than just um saying you know you need to you know if if we're thinking about health we can't just say because i could eat my say i need two and a half thousand calories just for, whether it is that exactly that but just for argument's sake say it's that I could technically, if I'm just wanting to hit those, I could eat those with Mars bars or biscuits or whatever and hit those, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to feel awful. I'm not, I'm not going to, whether my, the difference in my, my weight is going to be interesting anyway of like other things, like how, how is that impacting all the functions of my body, all the, uh, those hormonal functions. So, you know, even though I may, I could, I could create a calorie deficit, for example, with Mars bars. I just oh, might sure. not eat any very many bars, bars, and will I? I don't know. It's be a good experiment to do. Like, will I lose weight or not? Because I'm still in a, in a deficit, but this, I'm certainly not going to be um, healthy. Um, right. The question. There was one. There's a couple of. So there's a couple of sort of like calorie questions which we can. Um, um, there's one. Can you can you see these when I pop them up? Yes. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, and when they say the balance won't change, uh, what could be? I think them as in, um, I think the, as in the balance, like them weigh, they're, they're weighing themselves, and they're not actually. So they're in a calorie. They they think they're in a calorie deficit, which is okay. Pretty interesting because uh, you can you can touch on this of like, if I'm counting my, how do I actually know if I'm in a calorie deficit or not? Because my like how much my body uses and how much exercise I do and what that uses is an estimate. And then how much I say I'm eating is also an estimate. So you like comparing estimates and actually, you know, sometimes the, the, the amount that we need, the deficit is not like, we're not talking about having like a thousand like calorie deficit a day. If we're talking like 200, well, that could be like a, a, a decent sized slice of bread or something. Um, so sometimes it's not that much, but. Um, right. Yeah. So in this case, I think it could almost be a twofold thing here. Like you talked about, everything at the end of the day is an estimate. So between what your body is putting out in terms of output, in terms of energy, is going to be very variable every single day, depending upon activity levels, just 
what you're doing in terms of like steps that day and work and whatnot. And then like you've touched on with food, all of it is an estimate. So even if say you're buying like a packaged food and you're logging that, like nutrition labels are still an estimate as well. They can be up to 20% off. So really? like not, yeah, they actually can. Um, yeah. And same with like when we are looking at food, it's making sure you're really familiar with portions because some of us don't realize, especially like we were talking about peanut butter earlier. Someone might log, say you're logging food, you might log, oh, a serving of peanut butter. And if you really don't know what two tablespoons of peanut butter looks like, which is a serving size, and that's almost 200 calories, which usually I like to say it's two thumbs. Some people will be putting in a quarter of a cup and they're like, well, I had a serving of peanut butter. And I was like, that's two or three servings right there. And they just don't realize it. Um, so I think it's that can sometimes be an issue. Um, but also on the note of you might not see the scale changing, we talk a lot about body composition in the course as well. So sometimes, and obviously it depends upon, you kind of have to evaluate this yourself, but you might not be seeing a change in the scale, but you could potentially be losing fat or putting on muscle. So yeah. you could be seeing body comp changes, but you just, the scale doesn't show that. Yeah. Yeah, and and I guess when we're talking about health as well, like the scale doesn't necessarily tell us whether I make an improvement in my health. It's, and it doesn't tell you whether yeah, your body composition. Yeah, no, it's right. in, yeah, no, interesting. The um, the other stuff. Um, someone was asked. So someone asked before. Can you explain um, calorie intake versus calorie expenditure? Which I guess you have touched on that. Um, touched on that there. Um, I think, well, that, that, we, could note, we could note on that um, with the expenditure, just thinking about the different avenues that you do expend energy. So the biggest chunk being our BMR, our basal metabolic rate, meaning like what we need just to function if we sat all day is the one way we expend energy. Physical activity, so exercises, of course, as well. And yeah. then just like your normal everyday movements. So walking up and down the stairs going to the grocery store, walking across the parking lot. So those are really the, the main ways that we're expending energy as well. Then intake is fairly obvious, but. Yeah, but people, and I'm right in thinking that I've seen plenty of stuff before where they go, what people, even when they're trying to, they're not trying to lie, but they, what they record as their um, actual intake is, is always not actually what they, there's always stuff you forget that you actually had. Um, yeah, especially when it comes to things like, liquids and condiments that's like some of the two biggest things like if you say just barbecue sauce again that's like a pretty sugary condiment and some people will put it on something they don't even think about it but it adds up especially if you're say doing a quarter of a cup well there's 120 150 calories that you just didn't even think about yeah yeah um the i'm just trying to get the other um question on calories um was uh I can't find it. Sorry, I can't find the calorie question. Um, well, the other one, the other one that come in that was that was um, because it was from YouTube. The other one on YouTube was about um, ketogenic diet, um, and just interest. They were in. It was like interested in the sort of pros and cons. There was a bit of a. Uh, there was two people. Um, one person that was very pro keto and it was like, it really helped them. It got them, um, you know, from, uh, from, uh, helping reverse them diet, their diabetes. Um, and then there was someone else that was like, sort of saying that, you know, we, not every, not necessarily everyone should be, be keto in the, in, the, I'll, I'll let you sort of elaborate on that, but just to point out in the, in the course that we've, that we've got, um, there's a whole, there's a whole module on, specific diets like keto is one of them but then we go through a series of all of them where you break it down and rather than telling someone what they have to do you break really nicely break down each one talk about the pros and cons of each and then sort of lay it out there to say you know we can we need to find out what works for us for all individuals but specifically on keto that's quite a popular one um these days yeah that like you said, you find people who are really passionate about it and it works really well for them. And some people are miserable on it. Um, it's really individualized, but so the thing with keto, I would say um, some of the pros of it are, it does focus on healthy fats. So it's the time fat, obviously. So it really is encouraging things like salmon and nuts and all those olive oils, really healthy fats, which we know are good for our brain and our heart, anti-inflammatory. So keto, 
is beneficial in that way. And it also, when people go keto, why and helps a lot of people, I believe, is because it cuts out a lot of those processed carbs, sugary foods, those types of things. So when they're cutting those out of the diet, they usually see a big change in weight as well because suddenly you're not drinking soda or having all those cookies. Um, so that's a good part of keto. It does have that foundational of healthy fats and all that good high protein. Um, yeah. But for some people, obviously, it just doesn't work that well. Um, our body is used to running off of carbs. That's what our brain runs off of. That's how we get energy. Um, and you do cut out a lot of healthy carbs as well. So we're not having all those colorful, colorful fruits, um, the really starchy vegetables they are probably not eating a lot of, those whole grains. So it's being mindful, too, of what vitamins that you might be missing out on um, and making sure you're still getting those. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was uh, we're sort of shift gears a little bit. Someone, um, Owen, being one of the uh, members in, within the virtual classroom, he's... Um, been enjoying the the course thing you said he got up to module seven and he had a he had a really good question around um uh, the quality of food and the difference between the difference i guess and importance and probably why um just to broaden it out a little bit of uh, you don't have you don't know this one so it'd be interesting to see what uh, this is not pre not preempted um the difference between going for organic um fruit and veg in particular, like veg, mother hit fruit veg, um, versus um, standard, like why someone might make that decision, what things we can look out for. I think it's a really interesting question. Um, yeah, interested to hear your thoughts. I've got some stuff to, to share on that as well, potentially. Yeah, so I get that question a lot, of course. Um, for the most part, it, when it comes to research, um, it shows that organic may have like marginal differences in like micronutrients but it's just it's not enough to say yet and in terms of like pesticide obviously anything you're going to be eating is within um like it's not going to be harmful otherwise it wouldn't be able to do it but when it comes to buying organic i certainly advocate for it if you have the resources to do so um organic is obviously usually a bit pricier so i would never turn someone away from buying fruits and vegetables just because they're not organic if you have the means to do so, great. Or maybe if you can only do some, then it's, we've all heard of the Derby Dozen. So maybe focusing in on buying the organic items that when you're normally eating the peel or the outside of it. Um, so think about like your apples versus a banana where you peel it open, right? So on that outer edge, whenever you're consuming it, those are better options um, if you can only do some organic. But in general, organic if you can, if you have the resources or even better, trying to get local, support your local and get yeah. some stuff from farmers around are all really good options as well. Yeah, you uh, you stole my thunder a little bit. I was going to say like that, but just, you, you gave an example that the, because the, the dirty dozen, um, and you made this, let's, let's not make the assumption that, like what are some of the things, just elaborate on that, because that might be, yeah. I, I, I honestly think that'll be brand new for some people to, to hear. Yeah, that. for sure. Um, so sometimes like I'm memorizing like a dozen things is not easy. So I would like to think about it in terms of, again, if you're eating the outside of something and not disposing of the peel. So we think about like peaches, apples, zucchini, if you're cutting it up, you're eating that whole entire thing versus a banana where you're peeling it open or an onion, you're taking off the outer shell. Um, so okay. that's where the pesticides might be. And that way you're not eating them anyway. So maybe focusing on getting those things where you're eating the whole fruit or vegetable and focusing on that as your organic source. Is that helpful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, yeah, that's exactly it. And essentially like if we're, um, if we're spraying thing, chemicals on to help something grow and like grow more of it and, and whatnot, I always think of it as a little bit of like the, the food that we so the the things that are growing that we are eating those nutrients that are in it have come have had to have come from the ground from the soil so mm -hmm. how how depleted the soil is of nutrient depending on like how it's being produced is going to affect how much nutrients are in the um in the in the food then itself yeah um, that's what it's something like I find super interesting is like if you have two apples from two different places in the world, they could have completely different nutrient makeups. You, know, you just yeah. don't know. And it just depends upon where they were grown, which kind That's of cycles back to the whole calorie thing of like fresh fruits and vegetables trying to log that. Like, yeah, there's estimates, but depending upon how it was grown, where it was grown, what nutrients are in it, there's, there's no way of knowing for sure. 
Yeah. So not only can you not compare apples and pears, you can't compare apples and apples. <laughs> exactly. Um, there was an interesting thing I heard um, just uh, just earlier today around um, the um, the the anti the sort of a lot of the nutrients, the antioxidants in the in some of the 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 vegetables, the fruits and vegetables are there for it to be able to protect itself from mm. the surroundings, and when we protect it manually sort of ourselves by adding um, pesticides and things on to kill all that bacteria that then you're stopping the fruit itself's need to produce those and that can right. be a, that could be a, a mechanism i guess or reason behind like organic being deemed like better more nutritious right. as, well as, as well as like not having the chemicals on them they potentially might have a little bit more uh, of the good stuff in them Right. I 100% agree. And like, that to me is kind of like something you just have to adopt as a, a thing you believe in. Like research can't really show that yet. But like, yeah. if I take a step back, like to me, that makes complete sense as well. It's same with like, for an example, mushrooms, whether they're grown in real sunlight versus UV and how much vitamin D do they have then? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like we, we talk about a lot in the course, like getting down to natural foods as much as possible, because that's where all the true nutrients are. Yeah. Um, here we've got uh, another one. Um, in terms of weight gain, so in uh, for, for the course that we've produced, there's um, a whole module, I think it's module eight, I'm trying to think of them off, the numbers of them off the top of my head, but it doesn't matter. But eight, there's a module on body composition where we talk about weight loss, weight gain, or, or weight maintenance. Um, I say we, you, um, and weight well, gain being one of them. And it's, it's an interesting one. You get these. Um, you know, when I was younger, the only thing, when I used to play rugby, when I was younger, I was sort of 16, 17, 18, all I was ever told, my feedback was always, I was just too small, I was tiny, I was like 10 and a half stone wet through, like I weighed about 65 kilos, there was nothing on me. Um, and I thought at the time, and I was one of those that like, oh no, I can't put weight on, and I'm, 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 eating, I'm eating loads, but when I look back, like what I was actually eating was not, it, I may have thought that I was eating loads, but... Yeah. What I was eating did not fit the bill of like quality foods that are actually going to help build a strong uh, body. Um, right. But yeah, obviously there's a lot of varying differences for people. Some people find it difficult to to lose weight. Like the weight I'm at now, I find it quite hard. To, if I want to, I'm probably about 82 kilo. I'll find it quite hard now to be any lighter than this. Um, whereas in the past, I've been I played rugby at 86, at 90 kilos. Um, yeah. So. It's interesting how even different people will have difficulties because everyone's different at trying to either lose weight or gain weight. But I'm just sharing an example there of like at different periods in my life and depending on where I'm at in my own weight, I will also find it difficult to either put on weight or lose weight. It's not just one or the other sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good question because some people can't like fathom how it's hard to gain weight. But a lot of the athletes I work with, especially the younger ones, um, that we're trying to bulk up a little bit, they, they just really struggle to put on weight. So what I like to do for them, um, definitely the shakes that we're talking about, just because you would be amazed how many calories you can put in a glass. Um, just lots of those really energy dense foods and shakes, nut butters, avocado, maybe some coconut oil. You can, you can throw a lot of stuff in a shake and it, it might get really dense, but because it's a liquid, it at least goes easier. It's not like you're having to eat a full plate of food. So like post training, I will just like, I'll have shakes for them that are 750, 800 calories each. Um, just because that's like one of the main times I can get calories into them. Um, I also try to encourage them as much as possible. Of course, eat at least three meals a day, but then just snacks between breakfast and lunch, snack between lunch and dinner, snack before bed, snack and choosing those again, really dense food options that aren't going to fill you up as much. So your nuts and like making sure when you're cooking dinner, having everything cooked in olive oil instead of just like spraying the pan or something, drizzling olive oil on things because that's a liquid source of really dense calories. One tablespoon was like 120 calories. So yeah. really focusing in on those energy dense foods, which on the infographic, we have a pretty good list of them um, and just using those as best as possible. Yeah. So um, if you are interested in any following up on some of that, there's a lot of resources and, and, and much and much detailed information as you can tell coming from michelle but it's all outlined in the new nutrition and health course that we've got 
um, inside uh, the virtual classroom. There's a couple of other um, ones that have come through. Um, not a pirate underscore, going to shout out to him. Um, he asked earlier, he's, I don't know if he's watching live, but um, I've had a few interactions with, uh, with them. Uh, what are the best ways to get protein as a vegan? Obviously, that's one of those specific diets that you do cover in that part of the in that part of the course. Um, yes. So just to... Yeah. So again, just to kind of circle back, we mentioned it briefly, but for vegans, definitely making sure you're getting a variety. Just because not all plant sources, most of them are incomplete, meaning they don't have all the essential amino acids our body needs. So just making sure you're getting a variety, you definitely can do it, but just be conscious of that. Some really good sources, I would say, is anything soy. So thinking about edamame, tofu, soy milk, high in protein. Um, also, beans are great, nuts, seeds, quinoa as well. So soy and quinoa are more of those complete proteins, so I really encourage having those a lot. Um, and those are, for me, like the big ballpark ones. And making sure always you're spreading it throughout the day as well. So this is a little bit off topic, but making sure you're having it throughout the day as opposed to a lot of us just have, tend to backload protein in the evening. So breakfast and lunch, we might be kind of slacking around on it, but making sure you're really providing your body with that protein throughout the entire day so it gets what it needs. Yeah, don't be slacking on your protein in the morning. But that's often no. probably, I guess, um, one of the ones that people can find it difficult. Some people, um, you know, are just not hung to say that you just don't feel hungry in the morning. Um, uh -huh. and just not used to, I always think it's interesting with, um, depending on where, where, what country you've grown up in, what culture you've grown up in. You know, if you're anything like, if you're anything in the, um, in the UK and of, of my sort of, not even my age of like, just generally in the UK, the standard, like when we're kids is it's cereal and it's basically just sugar yeah. and some milk and that's it. Yeah. Um, and there's very little nutrients and very well. They add some, they add vitamins and minerals to the cereals because there isn't any. But that's not naturally. No, um, and they don't add protein. So. Yeah. Well, no. But well, now they actually bring out protein and everything. Um, I don't this, know, is like, this is true. This is true. Yeah. Do that in the UK now. But like, getting getting used to um, cooking foods, and that's why a lot of the recipes that you've what we've put together. Um, and videos of there's videos of them to show people like how easy it can be to put some of these things together and for me a lot of that's about just forming habits and just getting used to it um, and also you don't have to have and this blows people's minds sometimes it did the first time I seen as a, a friend of mine that played um, rugby with big New Zealander um, big 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 strong guy and um, he just had like a massive steak for breakfast and it was like that was just no yeah. bother for him and I'd be that like, was not you know, yeah. I'm not, like, steak's an evening meal. Like you can't have steak for breakfast the type of thing. No, where it's, steak and eggs. Breakfast can be any. Breakfast can yeah. be. Yeah, I remember I was listening to the podcast once, and you guys were talking about like what you had for breakfast, and one of you had like salmon, which I was like, I need to have salmon for breakfast more. Like, and I actually had it this morning, actually. But um, Ooh. yeah, there's nothing wrong with having that in the morning either. It's just like we have. I don't know what happened to breakfast. I don't know if it's because it's like you have to be on the go and you're quick, so pour a bowl of cereal. But I, I mean. I feel like we neglect breakfast. It's, yeah. You just have whatever you want still. 100%. What's the, what's the phrase? It's like eat, eat breakfast like a king and uh, dinner like a pauper or something. There's, there's something around oh. like, the importance of. There's a phrase. There's yeah, something about the importance of breakfast. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense. We, we should be fueling up for the day. And then at night when we're going to bed, we, we don't really need to eat a ton. But we do it the opposite. We yeah. skip breakfast. So we don't have energy throughout the day. When we sit down and have a giant meal, and then we're stuffed and go to bed. So it is kind of backwards. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a little bit of both. Uh, following on from the uh, uh, Georgina King 222, so I'm calling out the names now. Um, what do you think of whole food plants-based diet? I guess in general, we've just been talking about sort of vegan. Is it healthy? That's like a... Yeah, so uh, and that's like kind of tricky because like some people say, well, I eat a whole food plant-based diet. And that doesn't necessarily exclude like meat, dairy, eggs, because some people still consider it whole foods. So I'm not quite sure like if she means vegan or vegetarian, but for the most part, like whole food, plant-based, great. Those are all the stuff we want to focus on, the fruits, the vegetables, the whole grains. Um, if you're including meat, fish, poultry, awesome. If you're not, then again, just being conscious of things, but certainly like that's, that's what we talked about, the foundation. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and then from Reese the Jack, um, he's a he's a virtual classroom member. If your protein is less than ideally distributed throughout the day, what happens? So I think he's meaning, you know, you did talk about those for people gaining, yeah. like getting protein throughout the day. But if you're not, what yes. sort of what's the what's going on in the in on in the background potentially? So kind of like how I like to describe it is when we eat protein, we can't really store it away for later to use. So for example, when we eat carbs, we can store it as glycogen in our muscles and liver, right? So when we do get low on energy, we can tap into those. Whereas with protein, we don't really have like a storage site for that. So if we're not spreading it throughout the day, we may have to start breaking down muscle in order to provide energy, which is certainly not what most of us want. So just in terms of wanting to keep your weight stable, your energy levels, your body composition, it's really important for those functions. Plus proteins are really important in different enzymes and hormones. So just functioning properly. That's really why we like to make sure we spread it throughout the day because we don't have this storage pool of amino acids and protein to just use when we need. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of other ones. So <laughs> I was talking to someone about bread today. Um, I've, um, I've found personally that um, my, uh, when I take gluten out of my diet, um, my athlete's foot goes away. So I've always had long, I've always thought my athlete's foot is like, oh, I've um, always got sweaty feet, I've always trained, you know, I've always been training hard, I've sort of had things been there forever. Um, and then exploring this idea of like, well, you probably shouldn't have athlete's foot. Like it's, it's there's something going on there. Like what's, 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 what's wrong? What's causing that? Um, and yeah, I've gone, so I've gone from being, I used to love bread and I guess I still love it, but I just don't have it now. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's one of the pains of my life now. It's one of the, uh, what is a pain of my life is like horrible itchy feet because you've got athlete's foot. So it's a bit mean for people, isn't it? Um, but yeah, no, I took gluten out and that, 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 that took that away. Um, but so, but this question, how, which I just, I'm just, that's my, that's just adding a bit more context to the question around, um, around bread, because I knew for me, it, that would be something that when I didn't have it in moderation and my, I, I mentioned it before about, um, what was I talking about? As I was having, um, it was right at the beginning, I was talking about having too much of something. Anyway, if I, oh, it's peanut butter. If I, yeah. if I get my, this is just my sort of personality. And it's, and it's important for people to like understand yourself. I know from my, my personality, I've got a little bit of an addictive personality. And when I get into something, it's like, then I don't keep it in moderation. And it like, even yeah. if it's something that's really good for me. And so, I don't know, like, I like avocados now. I didn't used to like them. I, and and it's, it's something that can be good for me. But if I eat like an insane number of them, then anything in excess is not going to be good. And when I would have, if I would have bread a lot in excess, not only with mathematics foot be bad, but that would affect my body composition in terms of body fat and weight negatively. Um, so uh, I would have to call it, but now I don't, I don't have any. But how, so how much bread is acceptable for bread lovers that want to stay lean? Because he's asking about, the question is about lean. Is it eyes? Yes, and stay lean. Um, so again, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier. I mean, if you could theoretically just eat only bread and still stay lean if you're in your calorie range essentially but then just imagine like you said your body composition you're not getting any protein at that point you're just gonna you know a little bit of protein i guess from the bread but not much um so it's really drawing a line having moderation because we want to make sure we're still getting that plate full of all those other different foods and colors so fruits and vegetables and protein we all, I mean, there's nothing wrong with bread. We like to say don't dread the bread, especially if you're doing like a whole grain, sprouted wheat, you know, so there, there's nothing wrong with bread, but keeping it within limits so you're still getting all your other food groups. If you have a slice or two a day, great. But like then let's focus on some healthy fats and some lean proteins and fruits and vegetables. Yeah. It's like the, uh, it's the cardinal sin for me at a barbecue where you you fill yourself up on bread and then you can't, you can't then eat any of the good stuff. At least yeah. I don't have that problem anymore by not eating bread. <laughs> but, um, but it is, but, but it makes a good, I'm, I'm sort of joking, but it, also, but it makes a good point of going, if we're trying to get in like nutrient dense stuff and I actually fill my appetite up with, with bread, which carbohydrate based and, you know, potentially not 
adding a huge amount of other sort of nutrients in me compared to, and if, you know, if I fill myself up and I eat less vegetables because I've like had a load of bread, like that's not tipping right. the, the balance in the, in the right sort of way. Um, exactly. And the con, so for eyes, it's like, just the con, like, there's, there's not like a, how much bread is acceptable for bread lovers that want to stay lean? It's, that amount is going to change for everyone, right? Isn't it? It's gonna exactly. Matter. And I mean, it's for, it depends a lot too on body size, body composition, your weight, how much you do need to eat throughout the day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But. Um, just, oh, this was a good, there's, so there was two people asked questions about um, putting on, um, about gaining weight, putting on muscle, gaining mass. Um, we did just answer that about five minutes ago. If you want it to, if you want, this will be available after this live is finished and you can, you can watch that um, back rather than just repeating the same thing over again. Um, and as we said before, in one of the modules, I think we've got 12 or 30 modules in the course and one of those dedicated purely to body composition, which includes all the information and in detail that you need uh, for changing body composition, whether it's adding, uh, adding mass or improving uh, muscle size, um, whether you want to reduce weight or whether you want to maintain where, where at, those three things are covered. Um, but I thought this was interesting about supplements. In, well, so we, we can talk about supplements in general, if you want to, but collagen in specific, though, should I supplement with collagen in my diet? And before you answer, it's just to give like some, some of these obviously very specific, some of these are very specific questions. And like, so Vinny underscore G, thanks for asking the question. Oh, that's like, my friend Vince. He's oh, is it? There you go. You know. <laughs> so, well, so yeah, I was going to say, I was imagining we don't know. It sounds like you do know him, but I was thinking. I do know him, yes. When we, but you know, if we don't know someone, we don't know the concept, don't know where they're at, like prescribing, like, yes, you should definitely eat this and definitely not eat that is. Yeah. We have no context, you know. You work with right. professional athletes um, and you work on with them in a one-on-one -on -one basis where you're able to make those calls because you know that you've worked through these things diligently. I'm just sort of throwing out there a thing of asking just questions on one-off questions to people on Instagram and changing what we do based on that. We need to make sure that we've got, yeah. you know, we're, 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 we're getting information from people we trust. You're a registered dietitian, nutritionist. Um, so we can trust um, what your advice is, but at the same time, people need to like, just be aware of their own context. Yeah. No, I'm happy you bring that up. Cause even like, I mean, most people, when I'm making a recommendation, I'll have, days of food logs to see what they're doing. I'll have blood work to look at when it comes to supplements. So this is for sure just a general recommendation and by no means like make a 180 switch. It, it's very unique in individual needs. Yeah. Um, so what about, so just what about collagen? Why, why would somebody consider collagen? Yeah, so collagen, I'm a big fan of collagen. I actually use it with most of my athletes. We use it pre-training just because there is some research out. Again, it's not solid, but they're still looking at it. And at the end of the day, I always like to say, Collagen is just protein. It's it's a it's a natural source of protein. So it's it sounds kind of gross, but it's ground up tendons of like cows and whatnot. But yeah. so why we like to use it pre training is that's exactly how I explain it to the guys. Is this is essentially ground up tendons of animals, and what research is showing is that it's actually the vegans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Sorry. just being so, <laughs> Sorry, and I just probably shouldn't have. I'm not. I don't mean that. That okay. across yes. wrong as well. But I'm just in case uh, that there are some vegan questions, and obviously everyone's got their own views on these things. And like, I'm not yes. sorry, I shouldn't have. I wasn't no, laughing. That, I, that me laughing there is uh, is the wrong thing to do. I didn't mean it like that. I'm just just the way you, you're you're just honestly describing what it that's is. That's what it that is. I, it's right. Important that is people, it's important what it's people from. Know. Right. Yeah. So that's how I like to explain it to the guys because we're looking. They're seeing that pre-training. If you ingest it obviously you're putting in that same substance. So it's helping build up your own tendons, ligaments, stronger and bones. So that's where I really like collagen. And again, even though research is kind of new on it, at the end of the day, it's just an extra protein source. But it's important to keep in mind that some people will supplement with it afterwards instead of having like a whey protein or a whole protein. And collagen is still not a complete protein source. So it doesn't have all the essential amino acids. So by no means would I say replace collagen with like maybe a whey protein shake or something like that. But I would go ahead, do it pre-training or even throughout the day. Um, there's research showing too with hair, skin, nails. Of course, collagen is really important. So I think it's a good source um, to get your protein from. Cool. Um, 
just seeing what the final questions were. There's heart about the mass, yeah, the mass going in. I think we're about there. Um, so, say so those that are asking about um, gaining mass, that is, um, yeah, that is uh, answered earlier. This will be available to watch back, so you can go back and look there. Um, obviously, if you've got any um, any other questions after this, you can either um, this. So you can you should be able to click on Michelle's um, Instagram. You can uh, send her a direct message. Send a direct message to us. Um, also, would you know if you like and are interested in more? We've got this whole brand new uh, nutrition um, and health course that we've put together and uh, is available. It's launched uh, last weekend. Uh, so it's only been live a few days and uh, there's a current launch offer on it at the moment reduced from £150 down to £100 a one-off payment um, so check out the details for that I think the first module you can actually have a look in and see and get a flavour for what's going on um, so the details for that the link, there's a link in our uh, profile so if you go to um, Schoolcast I don't know if you've got it in your, in your profile but on our yes yeah, so it's in both our profiles go to our profile you'll see a link and it will take you to the new course there. And uh, you can go and uh, find out more and take a real deep dive, as we like to yes, say, into uh, yeah, nutrition and health. Um, so thank you everyone for watching. Thank you from uh, Michelle for joining yeah, us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we look Good forward questions. to... Yeah, great questions for everyone. And we look forward to um, more questions from you. Um, and uh, yeah, keep us updated. Also like in... Uh, people sort of sharing um, some of you, some people have been using the recipes that are in there yeah. and sharing those that's great to see and if you make any if you have any of your own recipes or little twists and little tweaks and little changes you make to them uh, do share those and like tag us in there so we can see it's always nice to see people taking like uh, a lot of the recipes um, or there's three that you've put there that are effectively like a framework to build a build a shape from build a wrap from build uh, a smoothie from so it gives people examples but then also free license to take the uh take the builder like formula and go right i'm gonna use exactly. it and i like that and build and you can start to make your own which is really cool yeah it's a really nice feature cool great right. thank all you right. everyone for watching thank you Michelle, for joining us and we'll catch you all again soon you know Thanks. you know how we sign off until next time class dismissed <laughs> see ya see ya <laughs>